Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to U.S. History Through Film. As we look at the worksheet for the movie Glory, a movie that in its broad outlines is um, very powerful and largely accurate, but has many details that um, are less so. Um, now, number, number three um, was mentions that uh, Colonel Shaw has been given the rank of captain by his company. And that's to show how both in the U.S. and Confederate Army, soldiers often elected their own non-commissioned and commissioned officers, often all the way to the rank of captain, sometimes all the way up to the rank of colonel of the regiment. That had been a tradition in the U.S. Army since the Revolutionary War, meant to make it more democratic. The United States Army, though, began to significantly reduce this by 1863. Um, because men who campaigned to become and remain officers often didn't end up disciplining their men effectively. And sometimes the popular leader is not always the best leader. But the U.S. Army never completely eliminated the practice and it remained common in the Confederate Army till the end of the war. Um, number five, in the hospital, Shaw hears a rumor Lincoln's going to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, although it may not affect the border states, and both are true. The Emancipation Proclamation was issued um, following the Battle of Antietam, depicted at the beginning of the movie, but it did not apply to slaves in the border states or um, slaves in uh, areas in the South that had already been reoccupied. And in principle, had any Southern state chosen to return to the Union before January 1st of 1863, they could have kept their slaves as well. And Ed Lincoln kind of hoped some would. General 18, um, General Hunter rounded up a bunch of slaves and called them contraband, pardon me, number eight, not number 18, is mostly correct. Um, in fact, as early as August 30th, 1861, Union General John C. Fremont had issued a proclamation basically freeing all the slaves in the still loyal border state of Missouri. But Lincoln countermanded that order for fear of driving Missouri into secession and relieved Fremont of command. May 9th, 1862, uh, General David Hunter, mentioned in number eight, declared all slaves in Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida to be forever free. But Lincoln revoked that too, and because there were still some pro-Union slave owners in those Confederate states um, who complained. Although back uh, on May 27, 1861, General Benjamin Butler, um, had declared that any escaping male slaves who reached Union lines would be considered contraband, uh, war materials subject to search and seizure um, as a war measure, and not return to slavery. And Congress, um, Congress uh, backed that up with a series of confiscation acts, allowing the U.S. Army to free slaves owned by pro-Confederate Southerners in rebellious areas. In number nine, Robert Shaw is introduced to Frederick Douglass, who was famous as an escaped slave who became a writer and public speaker, um, which made him enough money to buy his own freedom and that of his family. Two of his sons joined the 54th Massachusetts, and I regret they were not depicted in the movie. His third son recruited other black volunteers for the army. Numbers 10 and 11. The governor of Massachusetts wants to raise a regiment of Negro troops called the 54th Massachusetts, with Shaw as its leader, um, is true. Although the regiment was not actually formed officially in late 1862, but rather in March 1863, rather later than shown in the movie. It was originally planned to include only free-born um, African Americans. The governor of Massachusetts wanted the 54th to be an elite unit and worried that former slaves would not um, be as good as free-born men. But it was hard to find that many free black people in Massachusetts. Eventually, some former slaves were included too. Also, Shaw was asked to take command in a letter, not at a party. And at first, he didn't want to because he didn't want to leave his current regiment. Um, number 12, um, Jupiter Sharks can't read because many southern states had made it illegal to teach slaves to read for fear they would read anti-slavery literature. Plus, there wasn't that much reason for most slave owners to teach most slaves to read anyway. You don't need to read much while you're picking cotton. Um, and the education in the South was not nearly as widespread as it was in the North in general. 
Um, number 16, Jupiter doesn't know his right foot from his left foot, and that's entirely possible. In both armies, many soldiers being trained turned out not to know their left foot from their right. So drill sergeants would tie some hay to their left foot, some straw to their right foot, and set the men to march saying, hay foot, straw foot, hay foot, straw foot, till everybody caught on. Indeed, a common name um, for a new recruit in those days was straw foot. Of course, in the 21st century, most people know their left from their right, but don't, don't know the difference between hay and straw. Um, hay still has seeds on it, and so it's good for animal feed. Straw is just a stalk of wheat, um, so it's used for bedding, but not really for feed. Number 17 says the Irish are not noted for their fondness for the coloreds, and that was true. Uh, many Irish immigrants worried that free blacks would compete with them for low-paying jobs and resented them. Um, even more than most people resented them at the time when uh, prejudice was pretty common um, everywhere. Um, numbers 18 through 20 were all true. Um, Confederate Congress had said that any bl black soldier carrying weapons um, would be returned to slavery. Um, any black soldier in a federal uniform would be put to death, as would white soldiers in command um, of black troops. Indeed, many black soldiers who surrendered were massacred rather than imprisoned. Number 21, um, when the black soldiers get a 57 caliber rifle, it's not quite right. They're actually 57-7 caliber. But it's true that both sides in the war often used British-built infield rifle muskets, as these soldiers were depicted getting. The South, in particular, was dependent on weapons uh, from Britain. But the North used some, too. Now, number 22, Thomas has heard a rumor black troops will only be used for manual labor, and it was frequently true that black troops were not put into combat. It was assumed they would be cowards, although in fact those that got the chance often served very bravely. Um, plus, uh, many white people were not comfortable giving black men guns. So in the Civil War, and even wars to come, black soldiers um, serving in separate units, as they did until the 1950s, were often assigned manual labor rather than combat roles. Um, number 27 um, is partly true. The uh, Battle of Fredericksburg was a terrible loss for the North, although Shaw would not actually have been with the 54th yet, as they had not been officially formed. Number 29 shows uh, Tripp being flogged for desertion. Well, in fact, he could have been executed for that. And for the purpose of filming this scene, the actor, Denzel Washington, was actually whipped with a special whip that, would, uh, that couldn't cut him but would still hurt. Um, so that they genuinely whipped the black man in the movie. In fact, to get the best possible reaction, the most realistic look of pain, the director told the man to whip, who was whipping him, whip him longer and harder um, than they had planned to do. So when he sheds a tear in the scene, that's a real tear. Um, they whipped him and it hurt. Um, number 32 um, does describe the black soldiers being shortchanged, um, whereas the regular U.S. private soldier got $13 and the colored soldiers got $10 a month. It was actually worse than that because black soldiers also had $3 um, every month deducted from their pay as a clothing allowance to cover the cost of their uniform. White soldiers were not caught charged a clothing allowance. So essentially black soldiers were fighting for $7 a month. And it's kind of hard to convert money from then to today, but I'd say it's probably about $700 a month. Although in 1864, Congress did vote to pay black soldiers equally and even to award back pay for the months when they had been paid less. Number 33 and number 34 um, are basically true. Um, it was actually Colonel Shaw's idea um, though that the black, no one in the regiment except pay as long as black soldiers were not paid equally. It wasn't necessarily a spontaneous act by the black soldiers. Number 35 um, says Harper's weekly serves the whole nation. Um, he claims one million subscribers and it was one of the most widely read and influential magazines in America. Although they avoided taking a strong stand on slavery before the Civil War began to avoid losing customers in the South, once the war began, Harper's Weekly became strongly pro-Lincoln, strongly pro-Union, and strongly anti-slavery. And the reporter Edward Pierce, who appears in the movie, was a real reporter who did meet Shaw 
um, and interact together from time to time. He actually wrote for the New York Daily Tribune, not Harper's Weekly. Number 36 shows John Rollins being promoted to the rank of Sergeant Major, which was the highest non-commissioned rank in the U.S. Army at the time. There was only one per regiment, um, and they were there to supervise all the other non-commissioned officers. In reality, the Sergeant Major of the 54th Massachusetts at this time was Lewis Douglas, the third and youngest son of Frederick Douglas, who was badly wounded in the Battle of Fort Wagner but survived, um, and who I think would have been nice to depict in the movie. Um, there would not be a black commissioned armist, officer in the U.S. Army until a former slave named Henry Flipper graduated from West Point in 1877 and was commissioned with the rank of second lieutenant. But even after that, black officers were very rare until well into the 20th century. Uh, in the U.S. Army, the Navy and Marine Corps would not have any black commissioned officers until late in World War II. So black soldiers were almost always commanded by white officers. Numbers 37 through 42 introduced Colonel James Montgomery, who did have command over the 54th Massachusetts, a man who was always strongly opposed to slavery and had fought in bleeding Kansas. Now, as stated in the movie, he had lived in Kentucky when he was younger, um, although he'd actually been born in Ohio and moved to uh, Kentucky when his parents, with his parents when he was 22 years old. He later moved to Kansas, where he fought against the pro-slavery forces, in 1859, he was even considering leading a raid to free John Brown from prison um, before he could be executed, but he didn't because there was too much snow in western Pennsylvania at the time. Um, although it might not have mattered, another man who had fought in Kansas managed to sneak into the prison where John Brown was being held and offered to help him escape, but Brown refused to go, feeling he was too old at the age of 59 to live a life on the run and preferring to die as a martyr. The uh, destruction of Dalton, Georgia, um, depicted in number 40 and afterwards in the movie, um, is pretty accurate. Although by the time the town was actually set on fire, the residents had already run away. Um, so they weren't burning it with the homeowners watching um, and getting in the way. But Montgomery did think slave owners must be punished for their sins and really did say, as he says in the movie, that Southerners would be swept away by the hand of God, like the Jews of old. Number 44 is basically correct. Um, Shaw was able to get his men into battle, um, in part due to the influence of his father and other prominent abolitionists, um, who put pressure on the government um, to get some black troops into battle, and favoring Shaw with his family connections. Number 48 and 49 portray General Charles Harper as deeply corrupt and show Shaw using this to blackmail him into sending the 54th into battle. In reality, General Harker was first much younger than shown in the movie, only about 25 at the time, because many young men were promoted to high-ranking um, officers' roles because we needed so many high-ranking officers um, so quickly on both sides of the war. Um, Furthermore, he's not known to have taken part in any illegal or corrupt activities. All there certainly were um, northern officers um, who were looting the South for their own profit. Uh, General Charles Harker, by the way, was killed in combat in the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain in Georgia, July 27, 1864. Number 50 mentions the first battle of uh, the 54th Massachusetts, although not by name. It was the Battle of Grimble's Landing on James Island, South Carolina, July 16, 1863. Union forces had landed on James Island to try to draw some Confederate forces away from defense of Fort Wagner, and some did come to attack. Union forces, including the 54th, held off the Confederate attack. The 54th lost 14 men killed, 17 wounded, and 12 captured. I'm not sure it became the 12 captured, but I would not be surprised if they were executed. Number 52 um, shows uh, Union soldiers celebrating um, because, uh, um, because they were. Um, because Lee had been turned back at Gettysburg and Grant had taken Vicksburg on the 4th of July. Um, which, of course, is true. Both of those were very important Union victories of the war often considered the turning point of the war. 
56 is true. Fort Wagner, also called Battery Wagner, was one of the forts defending Charleston Harbor. Um, although at the time, the second battle of Fort Wagner depicted in the movie, the fort was actually defended by 1,800 Confederates, more than the thousand stated in number 57. Number 60 is true. Before the battle, Shaw gave his personal uh, letters to the reporter Edward Pierce, who did take them back to his family. Number 62 um, is uh, in which Thomas takes the flag is not quite right. For one thing, of course, Thomas is a fictional character. Um, indeed, the man who uh, asked the question was not Shaw, but a General George Crockett Strong, who is in overall command of the assault. And it was Colonel Shaw um, who said he would pick up the flag if it fell. Um, the, uh, when the flag bearer actually fell, a black soldier, Sergeant William Carney, was the one to pick up the flag and carry it all the way to the bulwarks of Fort Wagner, where he remained under enemy fire until the 54th was forced to retreat. Sergeant Carney struggled back to Union lines with the flag, receiving four wounds from which he recovered. It is the first action for which a black soldier was awarded the Medal of Honor. Um, General Strong was also wounded in the battle and died of tetanus 12 days later. The depiction of the battle itself, though, is fairly accurate, although the Union soldiers are shown approaching the fort from the north when they really approach it from the south, but they filmed it that way because the lighting was better. And num number 66 shows all the men killed in the attack on Fort Wagner being buried in mass graves, with the white officers buried with their black soldiers. The Confederates considered this an insult. Shaw's parents said they considered it an honor. Although Shaw was not buried in his full uniform, most of his things were stripped from him, both as an insult and to be kept as souvenirs. Although one Confederate officer managed to purchase Shaw's sword and sash from the man who originally looted it and had those sent to Shaw's parents. Um, number 67 is not quite true, although close. Um, the movie says over half the men were killed um, or were lost. Um, it was pretty close. 270 of 600 were killed, wounded, or captured. Colonel Shaw was one of the first to die um, in the battle, um, as did 229 of his men. Um, 24 more later died of their wounds. 15 were captured. 52 went missing in action and were never accounted for. 149 were wounded. However, many soldiers, over half, did survive, um, and the flag was never captured, and thanks to the bravery of Sergeant William Carney. Still, a 45% casualty rate's off, awfully high, the highest the 54th Massachusetts ever suffered. Furthermore, considering that the 54th Massachusetts was just one of 14 Union regiments involved in the attack, it is thought that over 1,500 Union soldiers were killed, wounded, or went missing in the Second Battle of Fort Wagner. The commander of Fort Wagner itself, General Johnson Haygood, stated he buried 800 men in mass graves, where um, they may have poisoned the fort's water supply as they decomposed. The final text of the movie, although there's no specific question about it, states that Fort Wagner was never taken which is also not entirely true. Although it never was captured in a direct assault, the U.S. Navy maintained a two-month bombardment of Fort Wagner, um, starting before the first assault by the Army and continuing until the Confederates did abandon the fort, September 7, 1863. After that, naval bombardment destroyed Fort Sumter and hit Charleston and other forts, so Charleston was cut off from any sea travel.